<laughs> if someone had said to you in December that by April, millions of people all over the world would be infected with a mysterious new virus that has no vaccine, you'd think they were talking about a Hollywood script. It's happened so fast, it almost doesn't seem real. Coronavirus pandemic. Coronavirus pandemic. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. The COVID-19 virus. The virus of the virus. COVID-19. The coronavirus. COVID-19. The apocalypse. We're going to a different place, which is a new normal. 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 New normal. Embrace the new normals of social distancing and sheltering in place, all the physical isolation. The new normal. The new normal. The new normal. The new normal. This new normal is going to look very, very different. Not normal, but a new normal. The new normal. New normal. There will be a new normal. A new normal. New normal. A new normal. The new norm. A new normal. This is the new normal. This is our new normal. Our new normal. A new normal. Our new normal. New normal. The new normal. Our new normal. We will transition into the new normal. And this new normal is just the normal of future generations. All of us should be able to name all the people we've been in close contact with over the last two weeks as a new normal. Our new normal. The new normal. Our new normal. Our lives will never be the same. The new normal. This new normal. I think everyone's life is completely disrupted. You know, your normal pattern of you know, go to meetings, uh, you know, watch sports events. And no normalcy as we knew it. This is not going to go away anytime soon. This will be the new normal until a vaccine is developed. The vaccine. The vaccine. A vaccine. The vaccine for this terrible virus. An amazing vaccine uh, to the entire world. The world awaits a vaccine. The vaccine. The vaccines. The thing that'll get us back is the vaccine. Until we have a vaccine. Zero tolerance. So every time we see a case, we basically pounce on it. A vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. To all 7 billion people. Almost every expert agrees a vaccine is the fastest way to get our world back. You know, it's so important to get not just hundreds of millions, but literally billions of those vaccines. Legislative amendments that would make vaccinations mandatory for public school students unless they have a medical exemption. The vaccine is the thing that, that will change things. It's a vaccine. It's a vaccine. A vaccination. A COVID-19 vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. A vaccine. The vaccine is critical. Very broad vaccination. Vaccine. The vaccine. The vaccine. On the issue of the vaccine, which you've said in the past could take a year to 18 months, will we have to wait for a vaccine to hug our family and friends who are outside of our bubble? You know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. Hey, Billy. What's happening? Hi, folks. Well, they're really pushing the second wave here in Australia. They're saying Victoria is in the grip of the second wave. And they're really pushing it, folks. They're really pushing it. They're bringing in mandatory face masks in Victoria now. They're saying the second wave is going to be tougher to deal with, of course, than the first wave. I would suggest one of the reasons it's going to be tougher is because they're bringing in things like mandatory face masks. It's now a $200 fine in Melbourne if you leave your house without a face mask on. First and foremost, masks and face coverings will, from 11.59pm Wednesday night, be mandatory uh, for uh, everyone in Melbourne and Mitchell Shire. If you are out of your home for one of the four permitted reasons, then you need to be wearing a mask, and I stress, or a face covering. It need not be a hospital grade mask, it need not be one of the handmade masks like I was wearing uh, when I came in uh, today. Uh, it can be a scarf, it can be a homemade mask. It's a relatively simple thing, but it's also about embedding behaviour, embedding behaviour, embedding behaviour that I think is going to be just as important on the other side of this second wave as it is in bringing these case numbers down. Uh, we are going to be wearing masks in Victoria 
uh, and potentially in other parts of the, other parts of the country uh, for a very long time. There's no vaccine to this wildly infectious virus uh, and it's a simple thing but it's about changing habits, it's about it becoming a simple part of your routine. Uh, most of us wouldn't leave home without our keys, we wouldn't leave home without our mobile phone, uh, you won't be able to leave home without your mask and then wear it where um, it is absolutely essential uh, to stop the spread of this virus. So basically they're making you perform an action which is going to make you sick under the threat of punishment, under the threat of being fined if you do not adopt this procedure, which is going to inhibit your airflow, cause you to breathe, breathe your own viral load back into your body and essentially make you sick. Of course, there are ways of avoiding the facial recognition and all the stuff they want to roll out with it, folks. There are certain procedures you could undertake. If you're forced to wear a mask, well, you could kind of go a little bit over the top with it. Some people are doing that. But this is just the beginning, folks. It's, uh, it's not going to go away. I said that months ago, this is not going to go away. They're going to release the lockdown a little bit and then they're going to ramp it up even more. The way they've done with the border opening here in Queensland, how they've managed to open the borders and really it's more difficult to get through the borders now they've opened them than what it was when the borders were closed. Hey, Billy. It's quite remarkable how they're able to do that. But people just kind of go along with it. And it's going to get more and more full on, folks. What they want to do, you know, the COVID pass. I mentioned to you a few reports ago, the COVID pass they want to bring in, the mandatory pass that everybody needs to have to show their infection free, all the stuff they want to do. Um, they're trialing it in Africa now. They're calling it a trust pass. Isn't that nice? A trust pass to make sure you're vaccinated. A vaccination record payment system is what they're talking about. This is the payment system. They want you to be scanned, retinal scanned, facial scanned, biometric scans. And that's how you're going to be paying. You won't need cash anymore. You won't even need your smartphone anymore. You will be paying with your face. And of course, you will need a record of vaccination in order to enter the store to begin with. A cashless economy where people make purchases with their faces. A giant network of surveillance cameras with facial recognition helps police monitor citizens. And that's the way they want to play it, folks. Ready for the new era of Big Brother? This time the super surveillance may be for your own good? Temperature sensing cameras have skyrocketed in global interest as states around Australia continue to ease restrictions and businesses slowly reopen. So you can see I stand here, it's looking at my face here. It then takes your temperature and this would tell you if your temperature is, is too high. So my one's 36.68. Canberra Airport has become the first major terminal in Australia to install thermal imaging cameras for all passengers traveling through security check-ins. Thermal imaging cameras use infrared sensors that can highlight those who might have a fever. But this sought-after technology comes with some criticism. The best location in the face to detect the core body temperature is the inner tear duct. However, one problem that occurs is when somebody wears glasses, because a thermal camera cannot see through glass. Surveillance trade publication IPVM has accused some thermal camera manufacturers of faking their sensor accuracy. This medical grade infrared thermometer said I was about 98.9. So now let's see what is the industrial grade thermometer say the way that they've been doing a lot of these measurements in Asia? 94.6. Wow, not even close. This has been consistently off by four or five degrees. Plus, fever detection is useless against coronavirus carriers with no symptoms. Nevertheless, companies around the globe are ramping up coronavirus biosecurity as society seeks a new normal. 
Amazon in the US has started to use thermal cameras as a faster method of scanning its workers for fevers. More than 70 of its warehouse and delivery facilities across America have installed the technology. Other companies are harnessing tech not for testing temps, but for staying safe. Cameo, Nice and a Motorola subsidiary are developing security camera software that can detect those not wearing masks or standing too close and ignoring social distancing measures. While this type of data might prove useful for governments and businesses in enforcing health advice around coronavirus, those filmed with rightful privacy concerns might be harder to persuade. Be more worried about how this technology might have what we sometimes call function creep, in that it is used and designed for one purpose, but then it gets repurposed for other things. What we said was going to happen. You know, and this exercise, as I mentioned to you a few reports ago, this, this exercise is due to go until I think March 31st, 2025, is when the whole procedure finishes. Interesting date, folks, 2025. You know, I said um, a couple of years ago, I, I did a show called Giving Life to Lucifer when I talked about the whole rollout of this smart grid, the AI system. And I said that in 2025, we are set to be in a very, very different reality to what we are now. By 2025, the whole system will be controlled by AI. That's the way it's going. And even when I look at the procedures now to combat this so-called pandemic, you know, all the computer models, all the stuff that's been rolled out, if you can understand AI and you can understand that AI is working to gain control for itself, then you understand how these computer models work and why they're so, you know, over the top. And so, you know, the figures were so wrong. But if you can think of a way of controlling and corralling human beings, then it all begins to make sense. It doesn't matter if the figures are wrong. They just want human consciousness to go in a certain way. And they want to merge us with the machine. And, you know, the question is, who is they? And when you look at it, folks, it's like they is now AI. The AI is already there. You know, we're waiting for artificial intelligence to emerge. <clears throat> but really, it's already emerged, folks. It's already there online. Artificial intelligence is, is already a reality. We're just not looking at things the right way. And what it's doing is it's basically creating a system whereby we are going to be completely dependent upon artificial intelligence in order to survive, in order to perform everyday activities, even going outside and purchasing a meal. You're going to need uh, the whole thing controlled by artificial intelligence to be able to move through that reality, through the new world they're creating. You know? When you look at things such as the Industrial Revolution and you look at the periodic changes that society goes through every 50 to 100 years, uh, even more so every 200 years, is always a birth of a new reality comes from the one before, uh, a new beginning, if you will. But what is the new beginning we're moving into? It's really going to be a reality that is totally controlled by AI, if we're not careful. You know, the politicians, I don't even think the politicians know exactly what they're doing. I don't think too many people who've been involved in setting this up really bargained for what they were going to be getting. It's like all the rock stars and the pop stars and all the superstars and all the sports stars and all these people that have kept society distracted for so many years. I said to you a few weeks ago, you know, the Miley Cyruses and the Madonnas and all these people have been used to keep us distracted. They're all finding themselves on equal par now. You know, that video that Madonna did in the bath when she was saying, wow, we're all equal now. If one goes down, we all go down. She may well have been referring to the pedophile circle she hangs around with. But in many ways, it's, you know, synonymous with, with the whole of society. 
I mean, because all the people, all the rock stars and all the people that they pay at all these exorbitant amount of money to keep us distracted, they don't care about them. They're all going down too. I said that a few weeks ago, you know, it'd be a bit of a shock for these people to find themselves all locked in their own houses, all having to deal with social distancing. Forget all that rock star world, all the pop star world, concerts and sports games and all that sort of stuff. It's not going to happen, folks. It's not going back to normal. People think that, you know, this is just a temporary thing. No, it's not. They'll find ways of extending it, but they've got to do it in ways that the people are going to go along with. So they've got to do it gradually like this, and they've got to do it under the guise of this pandemic. It's the only way they can really get away with it. It's the only way they can get people to buy into it. It's the only way they can get people to police each other. You get the soccer mums and the Karens and Aarons and all these superficial people to do what the government says and to enforce it upon the other people. Like I've said before, you know, even we awake people, it's all very well for us to be pushing back, but if we don't wake up the people around us, they're going to drag us into it, whether we want to go into it or not. And there's also a new action called Protect Our Neighbours, folks. You know, they're wonderful, aren't they? They want you to spy on your neighbours, basically, folks. Like I said, all the sleeping masses are the ones who are going to drag us into this if we're not careful. So there's now a new program whereby you can protect your neighbours by keeping an eye on them, making sure they're social distancing, basically spying on them and dobbing them in if they're doing the wrong thing under the guise of protecting them. Isn't that wonderful? All we need is a bit of anger, folks. What happened to anger? Now, there's such a thing as wholesome, righteous anger. And we need a little bit of that here in the world today. Too many people are afraid of getting angry. I mean, I think they're just they're scared of getting angry. Anger is a beautiful thing, folks. All emotions are beautiful things. There's nothing wrong with anger. It's when anger becomes violence, it's no good. But you can be angry without violence. You know, I'm angry. If I wasn't angry, I wouldn't do these radio shows. I wouldn't do these reports. If I wasn't angry at the state of the world, I never would have done this to begin with. You know, every show I've ever done has been based in anger, based in anger at what the parasites that are running the world have done to the world and what they're doing to humanity. And we need a bit more of that, folks. Wholesome, righteous anger. I mean, even Jesus went into the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and whipped them out of the temple. There in the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. He made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold pigeons, take them out of here! Stop making my father's house a marketplace! His disciples remembered that the scripture says, my devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. Men need to stand up and be men again. Get rid of this whole new age concept that we can keep our vibration high and love our perpetrators into treating us properly. I mean, forget it, folks. These people are psychopaths. They have no empathy. They don't care how much you try to make them nice and how much you plead with them and how much you treat them like nice people they'll just revel in that and they'll take all that nice treatment you want to give them then they'll turn around and they'll just shaft you any way they can because that's what they do nothing wrong with anger folks and we need a little bit more of it i'm i'm shocked actually at how apathetic people are in the face of this 
people's failure to get angry, people's failure to really do anything about it. They just roll over and say, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, and do whatever they're told. It's crazy. We need more anger, folks. Wholesome, righteous anger, not violent anger. We just need men to be men again and remember what it means to be men. Stand up for your women, stand up for your children. I mean, no one else is going to do it, folks. It's got to be us, you know, and if you're not going to stand up for yourself, well, who's going to? That's the question. But anyway, folks, just a short report today. I want to bring you some more comprehensive stuff soon. I'm, I'm gradually getting through all the emails and getting through all this stuff. I've got a lot of stuff I want to share with you. So I will do a bit more of a comprehensive report soon. It's been good just to get uh, things tidied up and the emails have slowed down a little bit, which has been really good to see. And um, yeah, it's just been good to sort of tidy up and I'm, I'm still trying to work on the website and, and get that back up and running. And yeah, and just dealing with stuff on the ground here. I mean, it's difficult trying to deal with that cyber world and then deal with the real world here. I mean, there's too much attention put on the cyber world. We spend too much time online and in cyberspace doing collectivism when really we should be involved in activism in our own community folks and there's there's a lot to be gained from going out and talking to people in shops and going out and getting amongst it in your own community and i tend to do a lot of that um, and i push back everywhere i go anytime i see anyone wearing masks anytime i see anyone saying they won't accept cash i mean i, I really push the issue and you know we're seeing a lot of people in australia pushing back which is a good thing they're really pushing hard in Victoria, though. As I said, it's the perfect state for them to do it in Victoria. It's the smallest state. Um, you've got a, a reasonable amount of border to control. It's, it's, a good, it's a good testing ground for the procedures they want to bring in. They're trying to spell it into New South Wales now and say there's hot spots developing in New South Wales. They'll use it as an excuse to keep the Queensland border closed. Um, you know, they're doing what they can to continue to push this whole concept of the second wave. Of course, the more people they test, then the more people are going to test positive because they're just testing for RNA viruses and genetic material. And, you know, the people that are testing, the people that they're labeling as dying from COVID are not even COVID deaths. And there's a lot of people speaking out about this now as well. The Health Secretary Matt Hancock has ordered an urgent review into how Public Health England calculates the daily death figures from coronavirus. Well, let's get more uh, from Sky's Rob Powell, who is in Downing Street uh, this morning. Uh, what's this all about, uh, Rob? So this is about how Public Health England calculates um, who has died from coronavirus and who gets added, whose deaths get added on to that tally that we've grown used to seeing um, day by day that currently stands at around 45,000. Um, now, the issue is, is that the way it's being counted at the moment means that if you are diagnosed, you test positive for coronavirus, even if you go into hospital, but then you recover and you come out, and then two months later, say, or a period of time later, you then die of something completely unrelated to coronavirus, your death will still be added to that coronavirus um, death tally. So the example that was given to me by a government source was basically if you had tested positive in February for coronavirus, uh, you'd recovered, you'd been fine for the last few months, but then you'd been hit by a lorry or hit by a bus yesterday and died, your death would still be added on to that coronavirus tally, even though clearly, uh, even though you may have had it, clearly your death is nothing to do with coronavirus at all. So essentially what this means is that that tally that we've been used to getting from the government every day when they are updating us on death figures um, is likely to be out, is likely to be too high, which means that that 45,000 figure that we are currently um, looking at in terms of deaths from coronavirus um, is likely to be wrong. Now, this doesn't affect when you're looking at excess deaths, a different way of counting deaths, and this doesn't affect the data that we get from the ONS. There's a couple of different sources of data for coronavirus deaths. The ONS figures are likely to still um, be um, accurate, but in terms of the actual 
count that Public Health England and the government rely on, well, that uh, now looks to be um, inflated. So this urgent review has been ordered by the Health Secretary to basically try and sort out this issue and to try and establish actually by how much they have been overcounting their deaths. Hugely embarrassing for the government, especially after uh, some of the ordeals that we've seen in terms of counting test data. It now seems that arguably the most crucial figure in this whole coronavirus pandemic, how many people have actually died from the virus, the government's own figures could be way out. And this is happening everywhere. It isn't just in the UK. It's happening in the United States. It's happening in Australia. All deaths are basically being labelled as COVID deaths now, whether they are or not. All you have to do is test positive for this genetic material in your body and they'll say you've got COVID-19 and it doesn't matter if you get hit by a truck. They'll still put you down as a COVID-19 death simply because you tested positive for this genetic material at some stage and they don't even know if the genetic material you tested positive for is actually COVID-19 because there's never been a coax postulate done. They've never isolated or actually identified this virus as actually existing so the whole thing is just a big scam, folks. But, you know, that's why they're getting their second way, because they're pushing this testing. They're making the testing mandatory. And anybody they test is pretty well going to come up positive. I mean, if a pawpaw can come up positive, if engine oil can come up positive, if you can send tests in that haven't even had anybody's, um, you know, uh, sample put on them and they still come back positive, then pretty well anybody and anything is going to test positive, folks. Most people have had a flu vaccine will test positive. So that's how they're getting their second wave. It's just media driven, media and government driven. There is no second wave because there wasn't a first wave. There is no pandemic, folks. It's a complete scam. It's all about crashing the world economic system. And it's it's going to get crazier and crazier yet. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID, folks. But um, it's going to get crazier and crazier yet. Um, this whole economic system, it's going to go down so hard. The government's now saying, oh, we may have misjudged how bad the economic situation is going to be. No, they haven't misjudged anything. They already knew how bad the economic situation was going to be, which is why they did all this, to cover up how bad the economic situation is going to be. They have to crash the economy, but provide an excuse for it to crash that doesn't look like it was them when it was. You know, there are some ways through it, folks, like, you know, with the cryptocurrencies and bullion. But even the cryptocurrencies, I mean, you've got to you've got to take into account that this whole digital realm is going to change. In 2025, when the internet becomes fully autonomic on its own and it controls things itself, the world is going to change and our relationship with the internet is going to change. I think cryptocurrencies are a good thing to um, put money into now because they will survive the crash over the next couple of years. But by the same token, again, I think it's going to be very important to pull your money out of the cryptocurrency world by around about 2024 and put it into uh, bullion and precious metals and land or whatever. Because I think after 2024, I think around about 2025, the internet is not going to be your friend. And if all of your money is in crypto in 2025, if all your money is in the digital realm and you can't access that digital realm, if you're locked out for some reason, maybe because you said the wrong thing or, you know, however they're going to go with these trust scores, and that's just the beginning of it. But if all your money is in crypto in that time, I think you're going to find yourself suddenly without. And I think that's going to be a big shock for a lot of people. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot to be made and there's a lot um, that's worthwhile in investing in the crypto world over the next two or three years. But after that, I, I'd be very, very careful after 2024. Uh, that's just the way I'm seeing things. You know, if you really look at the whole digital AI world, we kind of passed the threshold in 2015. In 2015, we kind of got to the point of no return, the point where 
we are becoming so dependent upon the internet and so dependent upon electronic systems to manage our everyday affairs, that we've kind of crossed that Rubicon. And it's only going to become um, more and more dependent. We're, only get, we're just going to see a situation where our, our dependency is increased upon all this technology. And that's going to go up till about 2025 when we're going to be completely dependent upon it. And at that point, the internet itself takes control of things and then it decides who can and cannot access the internet. I mean, I really think that's the way it's going to go, folks. And um, so I think, yeah, there's, there's gains to be made in the short term with crypto and with digital. But I think it's really important that people get back in touch with their life skills and continue to develop strong communities around them and prepare to step out of the system altogether or at least be be ready to be able to step out of the system around about 2025 because you know i think that is our window of opportunity the next five years are going to be very very telling folks the next five years are going to see complete restructuring of this entire social system and it's going to be worldwide there's no countries that are going to escape from this. It's, it's the entire world is going to go through this change, folks. So I think it's important for people to hedge all their bets and really consider what it means to be human. Consider what it means to be men and women. Consider what it means to be parents. Consider what it means to have a relationship with this earth we live on and take the necessary steps to develop that relationship and to realize that there's a very good chance that each family is going to be standing on their own. So, you know, you need to develop strong ties. You need to develop that strength of will in yourself and that connection to the earth, that connection to the people around you. This is why I like what they're doing down at Nightcap with the, the land that Gunham and the people are doing down in New South Wales, because that will at least be some kind of a sanctuary. Five years from now, I think the people that get involved in that project are going to be very glad they got involved with it, put it that way. Um, I don't think any of this society is going to be the same as what it is now. And I don't think what is here is, is going to be very friendly to people who just want to be human. I think you're going to need to almost be the Borg to be participating in the world they want to structure around us, folks. And we are at the tipping point right now. So, yeah, I think it's important for people to pay attention, folks. And if you're not going to get angry and stand up and do something about this, then at least get prepared for the future that is unfolding, you know. Because if we don't change it, it's just going to unfold. And we're going to get dragged into it by all the sleeping masses. That's just the way it is. So, you know, we have to uh, be prepared to either go with that or have some plan B where we are in a position where we can step out of that system and step back into reality, step back into a relationship with the earth. But that's about all I wanted to bring for you today, folks. Um, I'll bring you another report in the next couple of days. Please take very good care until then. And thank you for joining me on this report today. I'll speak to you again soon. Billy's not around. I can't bring Billy over to say goodbye. He's around somewhere, but I'd have to go looking for him. But we'll talk again soon, folks. Thanks for joining me on this report. Thank you to all the people who signed up to the, the old channel, the backup channel, AOD Scarecrow, which I've now changed to The Crow House. Um, thank you to all the people who've, who've offered me assistance. Thank you to all the people who've helped me getting set up on LBRY and BitChute. Um, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you to the guy who has sponsored me. And that's why I'm running the ad at the start of the, the video broadcast as well, folks, for those people who are wondering. No, it's not YouTube making money from me. It's actually me getting paid to run an ad. So I'm very appreciative of the, of the man who's, uh, who's done that for me as well. But thank you for joining me on this report, folks. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Please take very good care until then. In La Cash.